Hello and welcome to Into Your Life podcast. I'm Lenka and I'm joined here by my wonderful co-host Natalie. Hi, we invite you to join our weekly conversations about finding more life in one's life. Well, what does it actually mean? We have discussions with guests about ways to live happier, healthier and more fulfilling lives, both personally and professionally. That sounds great. Let's go. Today, I want to welcome Eddie. Now, Eddie is a young man from Brazil, in Brazil, who I have met being part of a, another community. So Eddie helps to run that community, which I am part of. And this is where I came across Eddie. And we've had a conversation because I wanted to know how did Eddie from Brazil end up in running a community in that's based in Switzerland. And I know this is all done online, but it's just fascinating how people are connected from different parts of the world. And just having spoken to Eddie, I just thought, you know what, we need him on our podcast because he's had some amazing experiences, which we want to share with you, the, the listener. So welcome, Eddie. It is it is really wonderful to have you here. I know you are in the lovely Brazilian warmth, lovely Brazilian weather, whereas we here are going into the winter and it's cold, it's dark. As you can see, Lenka and I with our scarves on and Eddie with his T-shirt. So welcome, Eddie. Just tell us a little bit about who you are, what it is that you're doing, and then we will get into it and ask you some questions. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Natalie. Um, I love to be here in this moment with you to have this conversation. And yeah, I thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Lenka, as well, for us to be together here now. And yeah, I'm Eddie. I am 28 years old and I am now living in Brazil, but I, le I lived for seven, almost eight years in Europe. Uh, from my 20s until 26, 26 and there are there are two years I came back to Brazil um, yeah and well what I can tell maybe from my story so that we can have a, a beginning point let's put it like that um, I've been always a good learner from childhood let's put it like that and very curious and I started to work very young because I was living just myself and my father. And you know, these kids that they have to grow up very fast. Uh, I was a bit like this. I was raised to grow up and take responsibilities and understand how it's the adult life and how I can handle and help in my father's company and etc. So um, I had this uh, mind. I, I remember being with my friends and they were just like wanting to play video games and I was taking care of the house my friends didn't want to come to my house because they knew that in my house we would have to wash the dishes and take care of the clothes and take care of the dogs so uh, this is just to say that very young I started to have some concerns um, about my life I started to work very young and I had a good job I was in university at my 18 year old I was in a very good university and a good job uh, but with 20 years old I was already very skeptical with uh, the path I was taking and yeah many experiences in that moment that we might talk about them uh, here in this conversation uh, but then I ended up questioning deeply what I was doing with my life what did I really want to do because I was like studying and working since uh, teenagehood and I didn't have time to really like okay what do I really want and I was already like so deep in the middle of computer engineering science and you know uh, it was like so much specific information that I couldn't see how it was connecting to the to the more natural state of life the natural flow of everything how it connects to this common realm you know 
uh, and then it was a moment where I started to, uh, I always had good grades, this is uh, one thing as well, and my grades, they started to fall apart, uh, because I was like really not motivated, and in this moment, then I decided to travel to Europe, my mother was living, and she still lives in Switzerland, and I went to Switzerland in this uh, quest of like let's put everything on hold and take a break and go visit my mom and learn French and get my English better and maybe I'll come back and keep going you know but I never did <laughs> so, because when with 20 years old when I went to visit my mother in Switzerland I didn't have a job and I was not studying ofi in official uh, universities or something like that. So I had plenty of time for myself for the first time since childhood. And, and in that moment, I started to explore my spirituality and arts, uh, music, yoga, and many other things, my, my main interests. And I started to read what I wanted to read. So I discovered that actually I love to learn, but I like to learn what I want to learn, you know, not what I am told that I have to learn. Uh, and this is a moment of discovery for me. And from that moment on until now, uh, eight years uh, after, I decided to take a way of living that I could integrate myself, who I am, the life that I want to have, uh, the role that I want to co-create. I choose, I cho I've chosen to take a, a way of living that I can practice that uh, and I can integrate my work with what I want to be and my personal life with my career and how I can earn enough money to keep doing what I love doing, what I think it's my contribution to the world. And also discovering what it is because uh, I have I had no idea, you know, and no clue. Today I have some clues, <laughs> but you know I still don't know uh, precisely. I'm discovering. I'm in this journey of discovering what is my uh, my mission here and what it is for me to do, and and accepting invitations of life. And so yeah just to keep it short and then we can have a more conversational um, design of this uh, moment and I started to explore some realms of collaboration and also the relationship to nature ecology uh, permaculture agroforestry and this was two things that I was very interested at and in the collaboration I started to research about communities and about um, different ways of learning, how we could actually learn together in a way that is not the university way to teach, you know, because I, I have my, um, my own um, critics uh, with university style. So, yeah, I started to study that and to take courses on that on making, and making volunteerings here and there. And in the middle of the way, I started to find some amazing things that I was like, wow, I love that. I want to, you know, I want to study this for the rest of my life. I want to work with that. And some of these things were that were very strong for me. One was facilitation to work with groups of people, uh, facilitating space of co-creation, co space of transformation, tra transformation, sorry. And and the other thing was music. I I discovered that I was de devoted to music, and so this was like a decision. Okay, this will be here for the rest of my life as well. Uh, and this was the way that I was uh, that I kept living from my twenties to until now, discovering little by little uh, what resonates to me and and finding out how I can bring more of that to my life and to other people's lives. And I came back to Brazil two years ago because I was feeling very strong that I needed to uh, to connect back to my history, connect back to my ancestrality. 
and to study that so I could understand better who I was in the world, what was my mission. And I came back for this main reason. And I found, I'm finding it. I'm still learning that. I'm in this process of reconnection with uh, my ancestors. And right now I am landed here in Bahia after eight years of traveling. I'm here in Bahia, yeah, where I I live a very ecologic and and simple style of life. Uh, we have solar energy, uh, the solar pump for the water as well, uh, and I live like in a very simple, uh, a huge but simple tent as well with a main house with some friends. It's a community project. Um, so I think this is more or less some things of my story that can um, that can give a background of who I am of or how I choose to live. Thank you for that. That's really interesting. And and you've had this experience or started your journey in when you're twenty, essentially. I mean most of us start when we're in our forties or even older. So, you know, this is, this is fantastic. And learning once you start this journey, it never ends. You just keep going and going and going and you, you learn something here and then you go over there and then you pick up something there and then you go back to learning this again. And this is, this is a wonderful thing about personal development or personal growth. It's that learning that you do. And, and you, you sort of hit the nail on the head there when you said that you love learning, but it's what you want to learn and not what the university dictates that you have to learn. So it's just, it sounds wonderful and it it sounds really idyllic where you're living in, you know, uh, in a community that's, it's simple, but it's, it sounds like it's something that's growing and developing and there's nothing wrong with simple. Simple can be a nice space, a space to develop, a space to grow, a space to learn. And I love how you shared about wanting to facilitate and help with communities. And the nice thing that has come up over the last few years is that communities are not only face to face they're also online communities and where you are you can obviously do both you can have an offline community that you can build as well as building online communities hence you landed up helping a swiss lady running her community back in switzerland so thank you for sharing just a little brief insight into into your life and into what it is that that you are doing and part of your journey and this is so important because when you are wanting to have more in one's life you need to look you need to try something you need to look at something and experience it to know yes this works for me or no that doesn't work for me let me try something else which is which is really wonderful but one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today is previously when you spoke, you talked about experiencing a silent retreat. Now, Lenka and I have spoken about retreats. We've, we've um, shared in a previous podcast of our different experiences on retreats. We'd love to hear your experience on a silent retreat so this isn't even pampering or anything this is a silent retreat can you share a little bit about that and just what did you get from it what how did you what did you experience from it and what knowledge did you get from it mm -hmm. amazing so let me just comment on something else that you said previously um yeah about learning that that I like to learn what I want and not what I'm expected to learn. I think that I I discovered that what I wanted to learn was not taught in university uh, because it was something more holistic and more about creating new ways of living. And I couldn't find that. I looked for it in many universities, 
I ended up taking a course in Gaia University, which is an amazing uh, university from United States that has some kind of uh, this uh, this information. They call it eco social design. And and I also when I when I found out that when I what I wanted I couldn't find in university and it was not easy to understand how I could get this uh, knowledge. Then I I I made a decision to myself, which was okay, I'm going to take this path because then I can maybe help other people who don't fit neither to the normal path, you know, because I have no problem with people who who feel that they are doing their best inside a uh, university, inside a normal job. Uh, I think this is very nice and we need everyone doing something everywhere. But for those who don't fit, uh, what, do, what do we do, you know? And then was like, as I am someone who has a lot of energy uh, to, you know, for to look for these uh, paths, I will do it myself and I'll try to be an inspiration or uh, to be useful for those who also want to look for alternatives. And on this path, I took many retreats, actually. Um, and I took retreat of uh, non-violent communication, retreat of community living, uh, some retreats. And the silence retreat was probably the, mo the most recent one. In, it was in June. And it is the Vipassana retreat, which happens in all around the world. And we can find all the info in the website, dharma.org. Uh, we can link that later on. Uh, but basically, we are there for 10 days, really focused on our own process. We, are, we, are, we cannot in interact. It's not even not talking, but not interacting. Uh, we don't interact to each other. Uh, so even when you get to the kitchen, for instance, you have your own dish, you know, uh, you go and you take the same thing and you serve yourself and then you wash it and then you put it back. So you don't need to, to talk to anyone. Uh, you don't need to interact and we are not allowed to. So it is a very interesting moment where there is no... Um, ex there is no way to flee from whatever is inside you, you know. Uh, you are called to be there, conscious, and see what is in there, and breathe, and breathe, and breathe. For 10 days, uh, different techniques of meditation for us to be capable of going deeper. Uh, I think that's all it is, uh, all it is about. And it was very intense for me. Um, I think that most of the days I thought to myself, I want to leave. Uh, but then every day there was a, a moment on the, the, during the night that there was a, a talk from the, from the guru. And he doesn't call himself a guru. Uh, I'm calling him like this. Uh, but then there would be this talk and then he would say everything that I was feeling and he would say, ah, I know you want to leave, leave. I know you felt this and that and that during the day today. Uh, so try this and this as a strategy and keep going for one more day. So every day uh, during the talk, uh, I was convinced, convinced to stay. <laughs> But if I say that it was easy, I will be uh, lying to you. Uh, it, it wasn't easy. And, but I learned to be... Um, I learned a lot about how to be consistent on, on what I am looking for. You know, because... Yeah, when you are like 10 days waking up 4 a.m. to meditate and meditating 10 hours per day, uh, having time to eat, time to sleep, time to meditate, time to this and that. Uh, and it's just that, actually. There is nothing else. Just meditating, sleeping, and eating, and resting. 
uh, then you understand that actually it's really a power of mind that you can train, you know, uh, to wake up early and do whatever is important to you or to stay, to sit for an hour and not move, uh, really to sit for an hour and not move. This is a power that you can develop. And of course, that it is easier to develop there in the context where there is people reinforcing that for you. But you learn that you can do that. And once you learn that you can do that, then it's magic, you know, because uh, you are conscious of your power of, of achieving something. And this is something that re was really uh, important for me to learn that if I was really serious about what I wanted, I could really get deep there and, and, and achieve it. Uh, this was one, one of the main learnings that I got from there. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you want to comment something or if I should go uh, keep going. <laughs> um, you know, we'll take it organically. We'll see where if we come back to it, if just anything more uh, around retreats and silence and kind of going inwards that comes to mind and it seems relevant. I just want to say that kind of your journey really resonates with me. I see a lot of similarities in our journeys in the way that I also kind of had to grow up quite early on. I also always say that my childhood kind of was very mature early on childhood. And then for me, the journey to questioning things, I don't think wasn't as easy as an organic. It might have been cultural. That in Czech Republic where I grew up was just after communism stopped after the Soviet Union had left and we became a free country after many turbulent years and the mentality of the people often was just keep your head down don't stand out don't think independently just follow the path and the path is you know you're smart enough you go to high school you go to university you get a job you find a partner you get married you stay in a job forever and ever you go to holidays, usually to Croatia, once a year. Happy life. Goodbye. And I never felt like I fit in. I never felt like easy connecting with my peers, with my schoolmates at high school, at university. It was only until I moved and I went to a student exchange program in the UK and I started freelancing there when I've met my tribe of people and I've felt oh this is how it feels to you know be fully accepted and to be able to realize your potential and open your eyes to how many different paths and opinions and opportunities are in the world that really started this journey for me and it was in my mid-20s so I kind of see lots of similarities you know moving away having different pace being exposed to different people, having the opportunity, as you said, I did not finish my master's degree because I went to UK, decided to stay, work, have a business, travel, rather than finishing a degree that just didn't feel to resonate anymore. And I do feel the same kind of urge for learning, but kind of the organic learning of I want to go in a rabbit hole of things that I find interesting and exciting and then connect with the people who are, you know, experts in there, who research in there, who talk about it. So it's just meeting you and talking with you just gives me so much joy already. And I'm curious, you know, to learn a little bit more about your mission that you have with the community living. And I sense the nature in there, the permaculture the design i would love to know a little bit more about you not only where it started where you add what you're thinking what your insights are hmm. yeah uh, so <clears throat> i think it all started by trying to find out how might we live in better better conditions as a, as a whole society in this planet this was my question uh, is there a way of living that we could take that um, might have a, a good future? You know, because the way that we are doing now, I can't see a good future for that. So it was like, okay, <clears throat> uh, because criticizing the society and saying that it doesn't work uh, is not enough. We really need to find solutions and to find alternatives 
So I was try trying to find out about that, you know, okay, if, it, if this is not enough, uh, what might be uh, a good solution that I can try? <clears throat> and, and in this research, I started to be really guided uh, by people who I started to meet uh, initially in Switzerland. Uh, because, you know, when you open yourself to some specific questions or you ask the universe something, then uh, th it starts to come to you. And I started to ask for that. I want to know what, what other ways of living. And then so, since, uh, since there, you know, uh, a lot of things started to happen to me. And suddenly I was invited to, I met a, a person who, who invited me to work with him in his house and he was doing bioconstruction, but I didn't know this word. Uh, then there was a camping that was moving into a community, but I didn't know Eco Village word neither. You know, so suddenly uh, many things started to come to me. And then, and with time I started to be, uh, with time, I started to be more intentional uh, as I was finding out what that was meaning uh, as a possibility. Then I was more intentional. Okay, let me take a book here and read a bit more about that uh, or something like that. And I came to, yeah, well, one thing that I found out, yeah, I we need to reconcile uh, our relation to Mother Earth somehow and we also need to reconcile our relation to each other and because of my need for autonomy as as well i started by planting and working with permaculture uh i i come from from the city i don't come from from um from the countryside so i didn't know much about planting i need i just knew very basics from my father he taught me but i needed to study that and as i already had a different point of view then i went uh, straight on to you know organic farming and agroforestry and permaculture i found out about permaculture and i started i just felt in love with that and I may I take a, I took a course in permaculture, and then I've been invited to help in another course, and then to run another course. You know, permaculture was something that really it it changed my my um, no it does it didn't it didn't change it gave name it gave name to everything that I was looking for. I was like, wow, there is something called permaculture that gives a name to what I was looking for. And there are principles and there are, there are the ethics, you know, take care of the earth, take, take care of each other and take care of the future. So everything made sense for me. Uh, and I was really into that uh, permaculture. And, but then very soon I found out that one huge problem in these projects was the relationship between humans. Guess what? Um, so yes, many beautiful projects about regeneration uh, with many problems on communication, on relationships and everything. So I started to research about how might we uh, get together and not kill each other and to do something beautiful <laughs> and then i started to research about uh i found out about dragon dreaming uh, non-violent communication so sociocracy as possible solutions to deal with the conflicts that are inevitable and with all this complexity uh, that happens uh, once we have more than one person uh, since we have two then we already have all this complexity that i was very interested in that and as i was very uh, i was like very social since uh, my childhood it was amazing to reconnect with that you know because learning about permaculture and about agroforestry it was like myself brand new in this uh, realm of knowledge but when I started to study the relationship between humans, uh, there was a lot that I knew already. Uh, it was a, a, a um, it was a place of power for me. Uh, so I started to research about that, uh, and I got very interested about it. 
Um, then there was the pandemics by this moment, which was like, okay, now I need to do that online. I cannot teach how to plant online. Well, I can, but I don't want, you know, uh, how, what can I do that can be very effective and then I can, and that I can earn enough for living online. And then I was like, well, you know, this thing about the relationship between humans, I think we can learn a lot online. And I started to find out how, how I could keep studying and keep practicing and keep teaching about this complexity of being humans together, creating together, because, you know, we are a community. Uh, if, wanting, if, if we want or not, if we like community or not, we are one huge community in one planet. There is no way to get out of that. Uh, this is our condition. Our condition is of living together. So we have to learn how to live together. And, and so that was the moment where I started to get interested in uh, the online part of that as well. Uh, how, to, how to manage communities, how to facilitate online sessions, uh, how I could run my business online. And, and this went on, on this way since the pandemics until very soon, until I established here where I am right now. Because now we bought together a piece of land. Uh, I still owe, owe some money to my father, but <laughs> we bought this land together. And now there is a way, uh, again, like this reconnection with an old dream of living with my friends in community close to nature where we can get everything we need and we can con connect to other communities and other people doing other things uh, locally uh, you know so this is a bit of the path with community and with the relationship to nature and even with spirituality because in the end i also found out to myself that uh, it is really about uh, being conscious and spiritual because I cannot, we cannot convince people just by arguing with them uh, that ecology is important or something like that. Uh, we actually need to be able to feel that, you know, we need to be living enough uh, so that we can feel this truth. Uh, that's how I believe uh, on 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 nature, you know. <clears throat> and so I started to take care of these things, uh, which are uh, community living, uh, spirituality, music, and and yeah, that's pretty much of what I research now and what I what I uh, devote my time to interesting combination of topics coming out now with the community living the communication understanding human nature obviously then the bringing in obviously the nature and ecology and the future of the planet and everything but also your inner journey and co-living the community living the living in synchronicity with nature is becoming a lot more spoke about, thought about, popular in the world. And I'm interested to learn a little bit more about your know, specific, how does your community living look like and feel like, you know, if you wouldn't mind here for someone who's cannot imagine, because for many people, it is a very weird concept. Oh, you don't live with only your partner, and your family, especially here in Europe, we have often very small family units. You would live only with your partner and your children. Once the children would be grown up enough, going to university, they would move and they would live during university, maybe with their friends, kind of the communal living. But then they would find a partner and they would live together. And yet there are more and more community now around the world, but we're realizing that there's no need to be so isolated and just have such a small family is that we can live in a bigger family house and community surrounded by relatives or family, 
or we can cho choose the family. We can live with people, with like-minded people within a community and we can support each other. So I would love for you to share a little bit about your vision and your experiences and your learnings already from you know all the journeys you've been on, all the teachings you've um, already in, kind of put yourself through and thought through in share something with the listeners about community living hmm. so nice um yeah so i love you to say that now there is more and more of that because honestly in my bubble uh when i started to talk about permaculture and you know uh, community living uh, many times I thought to myself, am I getting crazy? Because like there is no one understanding what I'm talking about. And then there was like one friend, okay, tell me more about it. Because most of the people could not understand, you know. Uh, and I many times I questioned my my path. Um, it doesn't happen today anymore. I, I'm already quite sure of what I'm doing. And about community living... Well, yeah, uh, also for me, it's very nice that you mentioned the family and the fact that uh, community living is a complementary or alternative uh, way uh, for, for, for family. And I, I would like to talk, talk a little bit about my story again, because um, my mother she moved to Europe when I was very young I was seven years old uh, and then I stayed living with my father and my father and I we have today a good relationship and we love each other I, I know he always loved me but in that moment it was very hard to keep living together and I had this growing need to go out of home um, and I have a friend who has some similarities on his own family, uh, who is Alison, um, which is Alison who lives with me here. Uh, so Alison, he didn't meet his father and he lived with his mother and his mother traveled a lot. Uh, so, you know, this is just to say that there is as well things that were not intentional. It, it already came in my story. Uh, to look for co for family uh, around this is something from my story I was looking for family because my family is very small and one is there another one is there so um, there was this need for me um, and and yeah then community was one solution one possible solution but what I found out as well with time was that uh, when we think about eco-villages, we narrow too much, of, in my opinion, uh, our idea about community. Why is that? Because then, yeah, you expanded your mind from family, okay, I take care of myself and my brother and my sister and my father and my wife. Uh, you know, you extend that a bit uh, to say, okay, not just myself and my partner and my father and my mother, but also, um, you know, the family from those two or three families who live with me or more. Um, but I think the idea of community, uh, the deepest idea of community that I want to bring for myself and for everyone is this expansion of care we feeling that we care for each other besides our family, besides uh, the end of my territory, my land, you know. And that's why I found out as well that thinking on eco-villages is a specific way of living on community uh, because then an eco-village is again, okay, we have the eco-village and it is from here to there and, and it's these families, uh, you know, but living in community, you don't necessarily need to live in an eco-village. Uh, you can create a community where you are, uh, with the people you know, or getting to know new people. It is a way of living where you are looking for connections, you are looking for collaboration, because you know the power of that. You know the responsibility of that. Uh, that's what I feel. 
And, and we are in a very initial moment of uh, our project here because we moved here. There are three months and a lot has happened already. But right now we live myself, my partner, uh, Alison, and also his partner. So we are four people living here in the land. And it is uh, a small piece of land. We think about uh, expanding that in the future. But as I said, for me, community is not the four of us. It's what we are also doing here with the local community, with the people who live here, the people who immigrate, the people who has been in this land for many years, uh, how we move this energy in creating uh, resilience, creating everything that we need together uh, for a new possible way uh, for uh, of of earth you, you know uh, a new yeah a regeneration real and uh, so yeah th that's what i think about community and that's the configuration of community that i have now i really love that you touched on this expansion of how we see community and how we approach community building because especially in today's very divided world where we often struggle with you know seeing other people and accepting and acknowledging other people for who they are and their opinions it is a very interesting world we live in then we need more people like you who think just you know let's all connect let's all do good for each other let's you know especially within your expertise or interest and knowledge of you know um non-violent communication and connecting with people which i think it's such an essential skill and i would love to learn a little bit more about that if you wouldn't mind telling me you know what are some of the key lessons that you've learned around kind of non-violent communication around relating to pe people who we might not initially feel intuitively instinctively alike connected to there is a conflict there is a tension there is a challenging energy because i think mm. this is so important in the world that we live in right now to in, understand embrace educate and really bring in the intention on communicating with the understanding non-judgmental no con like kind of resolution of conflict so i'd love to learn a little bit from you if you might if you may yeah sure um so yeah, one thing that was really um, important for me when I learned was that it is not always about solving conflicts. Uh, actually, the way that the conflicts they start to raise is also because we have many uh, differences between each other, but to hold on uh, uh, enough space to even manage conflicts and everything and to we, we need to be very connected to the purpose of why we are together uh, why we take care of each other why it matters to maintain uh, a good relationship and this happens on celebration and celebration is not party but celebration is this moment where we get together to reconnect to why we are here doing what we are doing. It can be uh, playing some songs around the fire. It can be a nice conversation. Uh, it can be a dinner. It can be a way going out, uh, a day going out together. But it is always something that connects us to the bigger purpose, to, to the feeling that it is not about me and, and Natalie and Lenka, but actually about something else that we are part of and we are all here working to maintain that, to expand that. This is our mission, that's why we are together. So uh, one thing that I found out that is that celebration needs to be in the design. You cannot design a project or whatever you want uh, and not, not think about how might you uh, how how you as a group uh, might maintain the 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 conscience of the purpose uh, and you know having the sacred moment always to celebrate and to reconnect to why you are doing that because the conflicts they are gonna raise 
And uh, this is another thing that I want to talk about. Uh, and you need to have this connection very strong so that you can deal with everything. Uh, this is something that uh, came to me also as a re realization. Uh, I can tell a story about that. I was living in a, um, in a community uh, which was like a city community uh, in Porto, Portugal. And it, we were very ce celebrity, let's put it like that. We had many moments together. We used to eat together, to play songs together. Uh, and we were not known for the community that uh, makes a lot of work. Uh, we were known for more like the community that uh, enjoys more time together and everything. And once we made a, a meeting, I, I, uh, I, I also uh, helped to run that. It was a little conference on the city with uh, people from all the types of community around Porto. So we, we got together in one of the communities so that we could learn, okay, what are the, conf the, um, uh, what are the, um, um, the challenges that we all find? What are the strategies we, we use to deal with that? Uh, and there were like rural communities and also city communities like the one I was living in. And, you know, one more about ecology, another one about arts, another one about I don't know what. Uh, and one thing that I remember was like uh, people from another community, they were much more doers than us. Uh, they were making a lot of initiatives and very activists as well. Uh, which was great. I love that uh, as well. But I remember that they mentioned something like, how do you deal with, uh, and then they named few things, uh, few things that happened inside their community uh, when one person wants one thing and the other wants another thing. And I remember that we, from the community I was living, we were like, well, it doesn't happen to us. This doesn't happen to us. And then we were like, why it doesn't happen to us? Well, because we maintain, we have a breakfast together, we have lunch together. Uh, our problems are other problems, uh, you know. And so we started to realize, uh, I, I realized even more uh, by that moment that when we don't have these connection moments, then other conflicts start to pop up. Uh, so yeah, and then conflicts, talking about conflicts, well, what I learned very important is that you can't run from them. You can't run, you can't escape. There is no escape. You really need to learn how to face and how to embrace conflict as soon as possible. As soon as you do that, easier it will be. Uh, because conflict is a tension and a tension is between the reality and the desired reality. And you desire a, a type of reality, I desire another one, and then there is a tension and we need to talk about that. Uh, we learned that we, you know, better keep into yourself and actually it doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, that, that's something that I learned, that we need to manage conflict and we need tools for that. Uh, and yeah, and then nonviolent communication came in as one big tool where it teaches you, it gives you a frame to, in a moment, be focused on your own emotions, what you are feeling, what you are needing, and then in another moment, being focused on the shared reality between me, you, Natalie. Uh, and in another moment, being focused on the other person's subjectivity, the other person's feelings, the other person's needs. And not uh, making a mix of all together. Uh, because this makes it very hard to have a clear mind and an uh, open heart. Uh, when we separate, okay, this is my subjectivity, this is your subjectivity, and this is our shared reality, this is what we see in common. When we have this, it's much easier to find strategies to, to, to solve uh, anything. Uh, and nonviolent communication is a tool that helps with that. 
this is so interesting and you know I could talk to you for hours and hours and to pick your brain and uh, get more from your perspective and as you were talking at the beginning uh, you were saying you know that you get interested in an area and then you, know, you found the right person to talk to and there is a saying that you know when a student is ready the teacher appears and for those people who are listening and who are on the journey who want to explore be their spirituality be their person development they're curious where who might be the teacher for me what might be the path for me sometimes the teacher is an actual teacher a person sometimes it's a book sometimes it's a retreat are there any other kind of moments experiences teaching personas teaching moments teaching experiences in your life that really made a big impact on your journey you know, we talked about retreats, we talked about moving abroad and traveling and living in communities. Is there anything else that you've tried and experimented with that you're like, this really opened my eyes and, you know, helped me embrace a new path and helped me get a clarity of the path? And potentially, mm -hmm. are there any experiences where you had high expectations? You were like, everyone keeps talking about it. Everyone keeps raving how impactful it is. And maybe it did not resonate as much for you? Yeah, when you ask me that, there are two things that I want to talk about. The first one is about ayahuasca. Um, so when I was 18 years old or 19, I'm not, not so sure, I took ayahuasca for the first time. And ayahuasca, it's a it's something that it is hard to explain for someone who never experienced it. Uh, it because it really, it, uh, for those who don't know and might be listening to this podcast, uh, ayahuasca is an antiogen. It, it's con considered an antiogen because it doesn't change the molecules of our body. It just opens and expands. It makes it run more of the same molecule per second on our blood. So something we already have, it just gets uh, stronger. So it is called an antiogen and not a hallucinogen. And ayahuasca is a plant that uh, many people experience, and not just by my, not, not just myself, but many people experience. Uh, you you can it is that you can feel uh, things that. Uh, Otherwise, it would be hard to to feel. Uh, you might know the idea, but there with ayahuasca, you feel that. You can feel that we are all one. You feel that. Uh, you feel that you fear this and that. Uh, you know, so many truths that we talk about, uh, they come to realization uh, with the help of this secret plant. And... And since there, uh, I took, I, I've been participating in some ceremonies by that time when I was 19 and 20 until I moved to Europe. And when I moved to Europe, I stayed six years uh, without getting in touch with ayahuasca and these plants. When I came back to Brazil, uh, I came back also to, to the ceremonies. And since these two years, many things happened and nowadays we actually host space for journeys with the help of those plants ayahuasca rapé and i learned that there are there are medicines to help us and we to bring us more clarity to bring us the joy of living the joy of love uh, and we we can we can use this help not as uh, something that you need all the time so that you keep conscious, but as something that helps you to access, okay, wow, okay, yeah, this is true, this is possible, uh, this is myself. Uh, and then you keep that for yourself. And this changes completely your life. It At least it changed mine. And I, uh, as I now, I serve it as well as a medicine for the people who look for alternatives for their lives. I see uh, more and more people who, with the help of the plant, can achieve some 
some states of mind where they get clear about things that would maybe take many years to see, you know. Uh, so, yeah, and it is also about what I was talking earlier on about my ancestors because the ayahuasca is a plant that is uh, known to come from Amazon, from the tribes. Uh, and, you know, I looked for that uh, as something that is from my land as well, from 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 here, right? I have indigenous blood in myself. My my family is partially Portuguese, partially indigenous. So it is all about myself as well. And and yeah, so this is one thing that uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, my experience with ayahuasca, it was really uh, deep for me. It, it was life-changing and it keeps being. So uh, I, I can recommend. <laughs> and yeah, of course, you know, not like, ah, you should, but it is a possibility. If you are interested, go look for that. And if you want more information, you can also contact me. I would be very happy, happy to help and to give all the information I have. Uh, because there is a lot of trouble around uh, this as well, because it it is a business uh, nowadays. And what was the other thing that I wanted to talk about? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, well, I hosted, I facilitate. I was invited to facilitate a two weeks retreat. We can call it like that in the south of Portugal, called Eterotopia. So from the Latin, etero is uh, another, uh, the different, topia, uh, reality. So heterotopia, a different reality. And I was invited for, from, uh, f uh, by, by some friends that run an association in the south of Portugal uh, and to facilitate with my ex-partner, which was also a great, uh, she still is, a great facilitator. And in this heterotopia, we had the opportunity to touch everything that for us is important to learn, you know. Uh, so we touched community, we touched um, new ways of learning, uh, we touched collaboration, permaculture, agroforestry, bioconstruction, you know, it was really uh, the, the the storytelling was like, imagine that we, the 40 people uh, that are here, uh, we, you know, the road has blown up and we took one boat and we went to a small island. And then, and then in this island, it's just the 40 of us and we need to do something. You know, this was the storytelling of Heterotopia. And, and so it was like a brilliant experience where I uh, felt so much joy to be, uh, to be occupying the space that I was occupying, to, to, to have the function that I had there as a facilitator, as, a, uh, as holding space. And where I, I've seen how people could transform their lives by connecting to each other, by learning basic things uh, about the land, about cooking, about, uh, you know, so really like a full experience on everything that for me it is important and a validation on how it touches people and how it transforms other lives. Uh, heterotopia. It was very, very strong for me as well. <laughs> as Lenka mentioned, we can talk to you for hours and just keep going. But I, I appreciate and, you know, really grateful for the time, you know, sharing your time and sharing your energy and just a little bit of your story and your experiences that, that you've had over the years. But one thing is before... Before we sort of let you go and have a lovely chilled out afternoon, is is there something that you would like to share to, for somebody who's maybe thinking community sounds like a great idea or just thinking how can I start this journey of looking or is this something I want to do? Is there 
a gold nugget that you would like to share? Or is there something we've not asked you and you're thinking, I want to share this information right now? So just share with us any sort of knowledge, gold nuggets, or something we haven't asked you that you feel that you need to get out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll play a bit with the words because uh, we call here bringing more life into uh, uh, in, uh, into our own life, right? So I would ask anyone who is listening to us, how can I bring more into other people's lives? How can I contribute more? How I can be, uh, yeah. How, how can I contribute more? How can I give more of myself to other people's lives? You know, this for me is community. And this for me brings a lot of sense of living. Uh, when we are sharing of what we have uh, with, the, with the joy of giving, the joy of um, being useful, the joy of using our energy into something that we believe the joy of making someone's life uh, wonderful, you know. Uh, for me, this is uh, very, very special. And maybe just, you know, just connect to this question. How can I bring more into other people's lives? And then think about your partner, your father, your mother, your neighbor, the per people you meet in the, in the bus, in the train, in the airport, uh, in the bakery. How can you bring more into their lives? Uh, just connect to this question. And I think this is, uh, this is a brilliant way to connect to the, all the knowledge of what we have spoken in this hour here. And that is a very powerful you know, thought to have or powerful question to ask yourself. And it's a great way to, to sort of wind down this particular episode. So if one of our listeners has been listening to you and thinking, you know what, I need to speak to this man, I need to pick his brain, or I want to connect, I want to learn about more about communities, facilitation, or ayahuasca, or whatever it is, how can they find you? Where can they find you? Sure. Yeah, I can send the link and um, to link to this uh, episode of my LinkedIn, of my Instagram, and of my WhatsApp as well, my WhatsApp number and my email. So there is uh, no excuse to say that you can't find me uh, online. And also those who want to visit my my place here, my project, we are also welcoming people, hosting people. So there is a way to contact me online and there is a way to get here physically as well. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. And it sounds this, this community that you are starting to build sounds like it's a great project to, to be looking towards. And we will put all your links um, in the episode so that people can contact you. I just want to say thank you so much for, for sharing your wisdom, sharing your knowledge with us. And, and for our listeners, you know, is there a way or has some ideas resonated with you, the permaculture, permaculture, the way of growing, the having a community? We'd love to know your thoughts on, on what we've spoken about today because it can be quite a radical idea or is it something that you've had at the back of your mind and thought, hmm, I need to do this, but am I going crazy? As Eddie said earlier, um, is this a crazy idea? No, it's not a crazy idea. It is happening and it's happening in more and more places. So we would love to know your thoughts about this around this. And thank you so much, Eddie, for sharing. And we would love to have you back to see how your community is growing and, and what you are doing with this community when it's been a bit longer than a few months is you know, what are the experiences you're having? You know, both the challenges as well as what is working, what doesn't work and how you are developing it as you are living it because obviously this is a living organism. So it changes and you changing with what you learning and you bringing that in. So we would love to, in the future, bring you back on and dig deeper into this and really dig in. 
But thank you so much, Eddie. Really appreciate you sharing your time, sharing your energy and your knowledge of a different way of having more life in one's life. If you enjoyed listening to our conversation, please share it with your friends and colleagues and don't forget to subscribe. We would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and write a short review.